Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Chris with CNM Aquatics. I appreciate you guys stopping by. In this video today, I wanted to talk a little bit about coral classification and care and what it means. So this video is geared more towards beginners and maybe some intermediate um, aquarists. And we're going to break this video up into two sections. So the first section I'll be talking about some terminology and what that means for the beginner getting into the hobby with corals. And we're going to talk a little bit about care requirements. In the second part of the video, we're going to go through individual corals and just touch briefly on each one, care level and, and what it is. So hopefully you guys find this, this useful. All right, so let's just kind of jump right into it. Let, let's start with some terminology first. Um, for the most part, corals are broken up into three categories and you have your soft coral, you have soft, you have LPS, and you have SPS corals. So, what's that mean? Soft corals do not have a skeletal structure inside. They're, they're just kind of like jelly, kind of like a jellyfish. Um, they don't have an internal calcium carbonate skeleton to support themselves. So those are soft. And soft corals are generally the most suitable coral for beginners in the hobby. People just starting out trying to keep their first corals alive, um, you, you want to start with soft corals like mushrooms, leathers, things like that. Then next on the scale you have the LPS corals. So LPS stands for large polyp stony and what that means is basically they, they have a, a skeletal structure underneath the soft flesh of the coral. It's a calcium carbonate skeleton. Um, and LPS usually have larger polyps. So things like your um, acans are LPS. You have, um, you know, scalemia in the hobby that are fairly popular. Those are LPS corals. And LPS are kind of thought to be um, like an intermediate level coral to take care of. One of the biggest differences between soft and LPS is, <clears throat> excuse me, most, most LPS corals benefit greatly from being fed meaty foods like, like, you know, squid and lysis shrimp, things like that. They greatly benefit, you know, coloration, growth, the health of the animal from being fed. So LPS is kind of generally thought of the next step past soft corals. Then above that you have your SPS corals, and, and that stands for small polyp stony corals. So they have skeletons as well, just like the LPS corals do, but SPS are, are generally thought to be more of, you know, an advanced coral to keep in a home aquarium. Um, Acropora is, is probably the, the most popular, well-known SPS coral in, in the hobby and they have a reputation for being hard to care for. Um, they need pristine water conditions. They need stability over anything else. So those are your three tiers, soft corals, LPS, and SPS corals. <laughs> so what I wanted to talk a little bit about with this video and the point I'm trying to get across, what does all this mean for somebody that is just getting into corals or getting into the aquarium hobby? We're going to touch a little bit on taxonomy and in a little bit of the um, vocabulary involved with that, but we're not going to get too heavy into it because, in my opinion, it really doesn't matter for the beginner to the intermediate um, coral keeper. You don't have to know coral taxonomy. What you do need to know, and the point that I want to make is you want to have the ability to look up a coral before you purchase it the species and you need to be able to figure out the care requirements that that particular coral needs to survive and thrive in your home aquarium. That's the whole point of this video is to show beginners, you know, how to look up information 
on corals because it is extremely confusing it can be very confusing when you're new there's a lot of terminology and stuff to read through and, and it is just outright confusing i had a hard time with it when i started in the hobby roughly 20 years ago um and done a lot of research on my own to learn about it but it is crucial and imperative that you look up information on corals before you purchase them to make sure that they are one compatible with other tank inhabitants in your aquarium and two if you don't know what a coral needs to survive and thrive a particular species how can you ever expect to accomplish that you know in, in, in your system you actually have to study these these animals and learn their requirements so soft lps and sps those are not taxonomy terms that is not in the vernacular they, they don't use technically they don't really use that for, for classification of corals those terms I believe were made up by people in the hobby as a vernacular to describe corals amongst ourselves and, and, and we're going to kind of figure out what that means so what you care about as a beginner is you know you're going to want to know if it's a soft coral, LPS or SPS, and you want to know the care requirements associated with that particular coral. And I'm trying to give you guys an, an avenue to um, be able to look that up and figure it out for yourself. So corals are um, actually animals. They are not plants. A lot of people that aren't in the hobby or know much about corals, you kind of think that a coral is a plant, and it's not at all. It is actually a, a living animal. So they are in the kingdom, Animalia. They are living animals, and they are not considered plants. Each polyp is its own animal, so corals are actually a colony of individual animals, which is extremely fascinating. And people say, well, aren't corals photosynthetic? Don't they use, you know, sunlight to make sugars and carbohydrates and, and, and develop nutrition that way to survive? And that's a complicated kind of answer. Um, so if you look outside in your backyard, you know, you got trees, you got grass. We know they use photosynthesis and convert the sunlight to sugars and carbohydrates to use for nutrition. What's interesting about corals is... They do this in a roundabout way. They have something inside of them. They have an algae present in their tissue called zooxanthellae. And that algae has a symbiotic relationship with the coral. It is actually a separate organism than the coral itself. So the coral itself is not photosynthetic. It is the, the algae that lives inside of the tissue that is photosynthetic. And what's interesting is this algae um, uses sunlight or the lights on our aquarium, just like a tree or a plant. They, they take the light and they use it for nutrition. And a byproduct of that process, you know, <clears throat> is proteins and sugars and carbohydrates. So they kind of expel that. And the coral will then use those nutrients to grow its its structure in itself. So I, I never knew that for years. Um, the coral itself is not photosynthetic, but the the dinoflagellants, the zooxanthellae, the algae inside of the tissues are actually the, the photosynthetic um, organism. So they use the sunlight and produce, you know, the sugars and carbohydrates and then the corals use that. It is a, a very, it is a symbiotic relationship between that algae and the coral. So why is this important for a beginner to know and understand? Because this is why certain corals rely more on, you know, light than others. A lot of your soft corals do better in lower lighting you know there's a lot of sps corals like bird's nests and acros monopora things like that that need higher lighting higher intensity lighting to produce um, growth and coloration so you need to know the particular species of coral that you're going to keep in your tank you need to know how strong of a light 
they need. You need to know if they need to be manually fed, and you need to know the, the water quality parameters to keep them in. And positioning in the aquarium. So Acropora generally like higher light, so they're gonna be higher up in the aquarium. And you can see the aquarium behind me here. This is one of our grow out systems here at the coral farm. You can see I have a lot of the stony corals up towards the top. You've got your bird's nest and acros up there and some monopore growing on the back wall there. And that's because they, they will utilize the higher par values and lighting at the top of the aquarium. And then as you work your way down, you know, I've got some favia, I've got some acans mid-level. They're hard to see. I've got some acans on the bottom, some mushrooms, some candy canes. So it's very strategic. I, I am very strategic when I place a coral. Um, but you have to have some type of groundwork, some type of, of information to know where to put that coral and, and, and what it, that particular coral needs to survive. So that is a, a very quick crash course on the symbiotic relationship of algae and, and zooxanthellae in the coral. We're not going to get too, too deep into it. It's, this could be a three hour video very easily and only scratch the surface. And I am not a taxonomy expert by any means. It's all stuff that I've read and I have learned on my own. So, the phylum of corals is, they are, and I, and I hope I'm saying this correctly, Nadarians. And what that means is they are stinging celled animals. That's what Nadarian translates to, is a stinging celled animal. And as far as taxonomy of corals go, they don't really care, like I said, if they have a skeleton or not. So they're not really, they don't even really care about soft LPS and SPS. That's not how corals are classified. Corals are actually classified off of their symmetry of the polyps and, and how many fingers are on each polyp. That's how they're, they're, they're classified. So there's something called octocorelia, octocorals. And what that means is they generally have an eightfold symmetry on their polyps or branch tentacles in their polyp structure. So if you count the polyps, the fingers on the polyps, um, they're gonna have eight little fingers on each polyp, if that makes sense. And, and that's how coral is classified from a, a taxonomy perspective. And then there's like hexacorals, which hexa, you know, means six. So they have six fingers on each polyp. And you'll see in the video, I'll go through different corals and show, try to show some close-ups of the polyps. Um, it's kind of like gee whiz information. As a beginner, you don't have to know that stuff, um, but, but I find it interesting. So I'm sorry if it's boring for some people, but it, it is very interesting to me. So what you're looking at as a beginner in the hobby is, first off, look up the coral before you purchase it don't get a coral put it in your aquarium and then look it up once you get it there because then it's too late so just just kind of remember generally generally soft corals are more suitable for beginners and then you have lps and then sps generally speaking so the care requirements and acropora always gets thrown at the top of this for some reason because they have the strictest requirements you know they like high flow high light um low not zero nutrient below nutrient pristine water quality things like that so if you if your aquarium meets the the guidelines to keep acropora healthy then generally speaking it's going to meet the requirements for other lps and soft corals they're, they're going to be able to survive in that as well whereas at the other end of the spectrum you know if you have some leather corals or some mushrooms in your tank is absolutely filthy you know a leather a finger leather or a toadstool leather coral could thrive in a in a filthy aquarium because they 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 thrive on high nutrients they like having high nutrient values in the water column and it helps them grow so they may thrive and branch out and be a beautiful coral and you're thinking okay my tank's doing great you know so you go out and you want to get some lps or some some l SPS, you know, some bird's nest or, or something, you want to try that out and you put it in there and it and it's dead in the day. And and the short answer is you, your your environment doesn't match the care requirements for that particular coral for the acropora. Just because the leather coral is thriving 
doesn't necessarily mean that other species of corals will thrive as well. That's, that's kind of the point that I want to make, how crucial it is just to research these animals before you put them in your home aquarium. So, and in the hobby now, like having the internet is huge. You can, there's no excuse to, to not look up care requirements on a particular species of coral before you put it into your aquarium. So, you know, just Cliff Notes version, just remember, third time I've said it, Generally, soft corals are more suitable for beginners, and then you have LPS and then SPS. And this is pretty basic knowledge. I know a lot of you guys know this already. So my whole point of this video is don't get hung up on terminology. You know, Nadarians, Octocorallia, Corallomorphs, Hexacorals, because it doesn't really matter in the long run. Just know that you, you need to look up care requirements for each specific species before they go into your aquarium. And I'm going to cut myself off here because this video is going it, to it's gonna run on and get too long. Very easy to do. Um, I hope some of this information is interesting to somebody and it will help you in the future with your aquariums. That's the whole point of this. And um, what we'll do is... I filmed a, a bunch of corals and some of the grow out tanks here at the farm in the frag tanks and they're kind of quick clips but I was going to go through different corals and, and tell you you know if they're kind of SPS, LPS, soft and care requirements if they're suitable for the beginner, the intermediate hobbyist or the advanced aquarist. So. We'll get into that section of the video and we'll go through that and hopefully there's some information packed in here somewhere that, that will kind of clear things up for you guys. So we'll get right to it. Our first coral, this is a finger leather coral. <clears throat> this is a soft coral and it is suitable for beginners. The next coral, this is a red discoma mushroom. This is the very first coral somebody should purchase for their aquarium um, if you can't keep mushrooms alive then there's a serious issue with your aquarium so this is one of the first corals that you should get a, a discoma mushroom so this is a neon green toadstool leather and singularia a finger leather and this is a recordia mushroom this is good for beginner to intermediate level aquarius And I believe, okay, this is a, um, they call it a hairy mushroom, so it is good for beginners and intermediates as well. And then we have, these are clove polyps, so I'm going to throw these into the intermediate section. <clears throat> Excuse me. Once again, these are more clove polyps. They're actually considered a soft coral. Um, green star polyps are good for beginners. They are a soft matting coral, kind of like zoanthids. And this is a Kenya tree. It's a soft coral. It is absolutely great for beginners. One of the first corals you should keep. And the same with these pulsing xenia. Um, a lot of beginners like these. You just need to be careful because if they like your aquarium, they, they will grow like weeds for sure. Um, Palithoas, they're like zoanthids, a little bigger. Um, I, I would say these are suitable, they're a soft coral for beginners and intermediate keepers. Another shot of them. So pallies are, are a little bigger than, than most zoanthids, and there's some other differences. This is a candy cane, and this is an LPS coral. So it does have that skeletal structure with the polyps coming off. These guys benefit greatly from feeding. I'm going to throw candy canes and favia into the intermediate uh, skill range so favia is like a it's an encrusting coral it will encrust over your rocks but they are an lps and they absolutely benefit from from target feeding you know squid shrimp mysis mysis shrimp things like that another just another example of a purple favia green eye purple favia no difference on the care requirements. I really hit the um, <clears throat> Favia section here. 
just another another Fabio. Um, Acanthastria, that's an LPS. I'm going to throw that into the intermediate to advanced, and people may disagree with me on this, but these guys greatly benefit from, from feeding and, and stable aquariums. So definitely an intermediate coral, but they are, they are fleshy and beautiful, and they are a lot of fun to feed. You can see the, the polyps or the tentacle extension on this guy ready to eat. They, they are ferocious eaters. Same way with this is a um, green and purple Blastomusa. Very similar to the Acanthastria. They benefit greatly from feeding. This is a Moonstone Coral, LPS, same category. Um, intermediate as well. They, they require a little more attention, a um, little more diligent feeding about three, four times a week. Um, so Euphilia. This is a green-tipped hammer coral. And I'm going to throw hammers into intermediate to advanced for, for several reasons. Some of them can be pretty temperamental. Um, but people love them. That they're not the heart. They're not by any means the hardest coral to keep. But you should have a good grasp on, on, on water quality and your parameters and, and how to maintain that stability for these guys. They will benefit greatly from that this is just another hammer coral it's a it's hard to see but it's a purple tipped hammer um, one thing with euphilia this is a frog spawn lps i'm gonna say stick with branching don't go walled you want to stick with branching uh golden gana ganiapora lps intermediate they love to eat and chalice corals i'm gonna throw chalice corals are an LP, lps um I'm going to throw them into the, the upper end of the beginner, lower intermediate spectrum. Um, Hollywood Stunner, suitable for a beginner if you have an idea of what you're doing. Um, you just have to be a little cautious with them. And on to some SPS corals. These are mainly Acros, Acropora, and they are for upper end intermediate to advanced keepers, depending on the species. They are very finicky. Um, stability is the most important parameter with these guys I don't care what it is calcium al especially alkalinity magnesium stability is what you're going for with Acropora and if you can do that and provide the framework for this coral they hit they show explosive growth here we go you can actually count the polyps the fingers on this polyp earlier in the in the other video we talked about that's actual coral taxonomy how, how they're classified not if they have a skeleton or not but it goes off the polyps um, a Miyagi tort, Acropora. Acros are absolutely beautiful with their coloration and growth if you can keep things stable. So definitely, um, they are SPS and definitely for more advanced aquarium keepers. That one's hard to tell. It, that's a, um, it's actually a worldwide coral yellow tip, Acropora. Some of the yellows drowned out on the tips. Um, bird's nest, Sariatopora. You can see the polyps pretty clearly on that one. And they are bird's nest, I'm going to say, intermediate. This pink bird's nest, yellow and pink bird's nest, if you know what you're doing, if you have a stable aquarium, you're probably okay with it. Uh, this is a Posilopora, SPS. I'm going to go, that's a good intermediate coral. Same thing, just a bigger colony. They're not as finicky as Acros, but you do need to know you know what you're doing with them so that's a good intermediate coral <clears throat> here's a nice close shot of so each polyp there like i was saying earlier in the video is its own animal which is incredible see all the polyps on here this is a cream plating monopora and i'm going to say monopora um, your basic red and green are good for i'm going to throw it in the intermediate um, but it's a good gateway coral for beginners that are wanting to get into SPS. So once you master, you know, some LPS and you want to take that plunge into SPS, some red monopora would be great. This is actually a monopora, um, a neon green digitata. They kind of grow vertically. Um, meteorite cephastria is an SPS, definitely an intermediate, um, very aggressive coral will sting other corals. This is a Neptea, um, or a sea fan. It is photosynthetic, so this coral, particular purple sea fan, is suitable for a beginner. Um, a lot of Gregorians are not, 
but this particular one is. And then this is just an example. This is not a coral. This is an anemone. Um, for, for brand new people, they are not corals, but anemones. They're kind of a different class. And I, I hope there's some information in here, guys, that help helps somebody out. Just remember, the most important thing to do before you get a coral for your aquarium is research it and the care requirements for that particular coral. If you do that, you're going to save a lot of time, money, and headache. I promise you. Thanks for watching, guys.